Franklin Delano Roosevelt personified polio and its unpredictability. As a young man, he was the picture of health, born to great privilege in New York's upper crust. In 1920, he was a shining star of the Democratic Party and a vice presidential candidate. One year later, FDR came down with polio at the relatively advanced age of 39. It's thought he contracted the virus while swimming with a troop of Boy Scouts on a summer vacation. He would forever be paralyzed from the waist down. Most Americans knew Roosevelt had had polio. He didn't hide the fact. What he did hide was how paralyzed he was and how incapacitated he was. For all his pains to downplay his condition for the public, in private, FDR worked nonstop to find relief from polio. In the 1930s and 40s, this was the second most famous address in the United States, the Little White House in Warm Springs, Georgia. Franklin D. Roosevelt built this place to be nearer to the Mineral Springs he was convinced bought him relief from polio. Warm Springs was nothing more than a rundown resort when FDR arrived in 1924. Even so, he envisioned a state-of-the-art rehab center to provide relief not just for himself, but for the tens of thousands crippled by polio each year. Nobody had established you know, private polio rehabilitation facilities. He spent about 70% of his personal wealth to buy this at the time. And Eleanor hated the place, didn't like to spend much time there at all. And who was gonna fund it? He clearly didn't have the money to, to keep funding it. But FDR was so convinced the waters held magic, he risked almost his entire personal fortune. And despite his wife's protest, he would make Warm Springs his second home for more than two decades. John Steinauer befriended FDR in 1936, shortly after arriving at Warm Springs from Nashville, Tennessee. Young John was fortunate to get in. With polio running rampant in the U.S., getting a spot was neither cheap nor easy. John's father, a Nashville police officer, had to pull every string he could find to get his son a place, calling on friends and neighbors to start a letter-writing campaign. It was $2,000 a year to stay there. My father, being a police officer, he, he couldn't pay $2,000 for, for me to stay there a year. And through the help of those friends who got me admitted there, I know that's how that $2,000 got paid. By the time John arrived, FDR's dream had become a reality. Warm Springs was fast becoming the place for polio victims to rehabilitate. A state-of-the-art center, complete with dormitories, therapeutic pools, a full rehab hospital. Even the braces and crutches were made in-house. For John Steinauer, Warm Springs may have saved his life. He credits the care and compassion of the staff. As an added treat, he was frequently able to go swimming with President Roosevelt himself. A great time and great fun to be with him. Well, others, we'd hang on him, try and pull him under. But in spite of his uh, handicap, he was able to handle himself extremely well in the water. On his frequent trips to Warm Springs, FDR always made the children feel at home. Everyone there was away from their families, so President Roosevelt was like a favorite uncle to all the kids. When we had uh, Thanksgiving dinner with him, he uh, literally carved the turkey from a sitting position which uh, has got to be extremely difficult to do. It was a, f a family affair. On April 12, 1945, the president was sitting for a portrait in this very spot. He complained of a headache, and within seconds, he was slumped over in his chair. He was quickly moved to this bedroom, and the doctor was called. By then, it was too late. The president was dead. That grim news out of Warm Springs hit the country especially hard. Not only was America at war abroad, on its own shores it was also fighting a losing battle against the polio epidemic. The victims of that epidemic were devastated by FDR's passing. They'd lost their champion. And for many, after 13 years in office, Franklin D. Roosevelt was the only president they'd ever known. I went by my high school, they were having a baseball game. 
And uh, the principal of the high school came down to the baseball game and announced that uh, President Roosevelt had died. And so, it, the, in fact, the game was over when that happened. They just called it off. It, it was like losing a member of the family. John overcame his childhood bout with polio. And though he would always walk with a limp, he went on to a successful business career and was a longtime Tennessee state legislator. In John's case, the polio virus zeroed in on the nerves and muscles in his leg. Others were far worse off. When we come back, we'll meet someone so ravaged by polio that she spent 58 years living inside an iron lung. And later, some call it the polio echo. Find out how a condition known as post-polio syndrome is forcing thousands of polio survivors to relive the paralysis of their childhood. When Polio Revisited returns.